This is a glimpse of Acorn at home, and a rather hectic place it is. The amount of sheer bustle in the Acorn building is clear evidence of how fast the company is developing. It's also growing at an extraordinary rate. Just behind the main building, you can see the bones of the new laboratories and workshops that soon will house Acorn's large R&D department. The contractors out there are working to tight deadlines because Acorn needs that extra space. Since its foundation in early 1979, the company has come from nowhere to a turnover of £40 million, a figure which is probably already out of date. From being a little group of individuals operating out of a couple of rooms, it now employs 250 people, and that number is currently increasing by 15 each month. How did it happen? Well, as with all the best success stories, it started with an idea, a vision of a genuinely practical, high-quality computer for the home. A vision shared by Acorn's founding partners, Herman Hauser and Chris Curry. The first essential for any micro is to be easy and pleasant to use. Even three years ago, this was not such a widely accepted concept as you might think. People did not believe that a user with no previous experience could sit down in front of a computer and make it perform useful and even complex tasks. Games maybe, but we were not interested in just making toys. We wanted to take a long-term view of our customers' requirements, and th this is why we've made sure that our products can grow from a very basic unit to a much more expanded, powerful unit. We've also made sure that our products are completely compatible because we wanted to build up a lasting relationship between ourselves and our users. Simple or complex, the product had to be good. We weren't interested in setting a price, then fitting in whatever components we could afford for that money, but in keeping to technically demanding standards. Acorn's first product was the Atom, which gave them a highly promising start. But the company really began to take off in a big way because of an initiative coming from a rather improbable direction. In 1980, the BBC was completing its plans to run a television series aimed at helping the British people become computer literate. They were looking for a micro to brand as their own and use as the basis of the series. At exactly the same time, Acorn was in the final stages of developing a successor to Atom and it didn't take long to realise that it almost precisely fulfilled the specification outlined by the BBC. The design was put forward, there was some brisk competition, and finally, the Acorn design was chosen. This was to become the now world-famous BBC Micro. At about the same time, the Department of Industry was starting its Computers in School scheme, aimed at putting a micro in every school. The BBC Micro quickly went on to the approved list for use in schools. The scheme has been one of the big technical successes of recent years, actually putting this country and ACORN in the position of being acknowledged world leaders in educational computing. Not only does every secondary school have at least one micro, we're well on the way to getting a micro into every primary school as well. Under the DOI scheme, almost 90% of micros now being chosen are made by Acorn. The impact made by the BBC Micro can hardly be overestimated. The original plan was for 12,000 a year to be made, but the production figures have risen steadily reaching 25,000 a month in September 1983. 150,000 have been sold, and that figure too will very quickly be out of date. The BBC Micro has become the standard educational computer, but we never saw it being confined to the classroom. 
it is being used with and without some of the expansion options, such as the second processors, in a variety of scientific and business applications. Many such applications previously required several thousands of pounds worth of equipment upon which to run. The BBC Micro is not one product, it is a family of products, expandable, flexible and compatible. The BBC Micro is renowned for the quality of its graphics, but it also has a sound synthesizer. It can be a word processor, can handle teletext and other communication options. It can even receive software via the BBC's teletext service. And of course, networking is another ACORN speciality. We always considered that a local area network was an essential part of the design concept for a micro intended to have almost universal appeal. With the Econet, not only are the obvious cost savings, such as the sharing of expensive peripherals, such as printers and disk drives, achieved, but most importantly, in the classroom, the users can send almost instantaneously messages to each other, images of each other's screens, and even take remote control over each other's keyboards. The advantages for teaching are, I think, obvious. With the BBC Computer Series now being launched on public broadcasting service in the United States, ACORN is facing its biggest challenge yet, breaking into the enormous American market. It's doing so with a remarkable degree of self-confidence based on knowledge of its own undoubted strengths. We at ACORN have managed to build up one of the most formidable R&D departments in the country. More than a third of us work on development Many of us have come from a university nearby. This is one of the reasons why Acon Computers has managed to build up its own custom chip design capability in-house. This allows us to implement our designs more cost-effectively and more elegantly than our competitors. It also ensures that our products cannot easily be copied. We have also managed to build up considerable expertise in system software design which together with our strength in hardware makes for a very harmonious product which is here to stay. Acorn recognized early on that a micro is, more than anything else, sold by the software available for it to use. That's why they set up their own software subsidiary, Acornsoft, which produces programs of the very highest quality, able to use the facilities of the machine to the full, and has a software team dedicated producing educational programs. Acorn's had a very eventful history so far, and its story has only just started. The only prediction we can safely make about the next few years is that the micro will come to affect us all, even more than it has so far. It will become more firmly established part of our everyday lives at work, in schools, and in the home. And that many of those changes will be thought up and developed here. In fact, with events moving at this rate, I doubt somehow that this will be the last new building ACORN needs.